Paris, Win Win, Ampan, and Nicola Trebujevic. Our project is sponsored by University of Washington, Bobdell, and Amazon uh, Catalyst. Our industrial advisors are Dr. Pierre Murat and Dr. Pierre Parparella, and our academic advisor, Dr. Wayne Kimura. Uh, our background and motivation, uh, effective asthma control requires prevention. The following questions are when, frequency, and what, the, what time of day. Under what condition we consider particulate matter, blood organic compounds, temperature, and humidity? Smart Asthma Inhaler provides a solution. It's, prior, it's, it's a follow-up project to Pirate Team. Our whole, whole system consists of Smart Inhaler, Smart Pin, and Smartphone application. Our focus on forms are uh, inter-system needs to become more compact, rechargeable battery power for practical daily use. And lastly, Smart, smart Pin design finalization. As diagram shown above, this, ind this indicates our user, smart inhaler, smart pin, and this is our Android application with smart smartphone. When the user initiates, initiates the button on the smart inhaler, it sends the dose and time of day uh, to Android application via BLE, which is Bluetooth Low Energy. And this, at the same time, smart pin sends the uh, environmental data um, to Android application via Bluetooth as well. And the user can access to the data to Android application if the usage before for better treatment and better um, prevention. A discussion of approach system model for our whole system. Our smart inhaler functions in the following manner. The inhaler registers usage even via button press. As soon as button is pressed, uh, inhaler never relies on medication that is controlled by pressure sensor. The inhaler usage events, which is IUV, uh, Timestamp set over Bluetooth energy, which is called BLE, as, pre as previously mentioned. When there's no connection, timestamp is saved, synchronized by second button. Lastly, very status indication via LED. Our smart pin functions the following manner. Uh, as aforementioned, it collects, uh, it tracks environmental data, automatically collects particulate matter, blood organic compounds, temperature and humidity. It communicates with phone application via BLE as inhaler, and synchronization button press, uh, synchronization via button press manually. Lastly, our Android application it collects smart inhaler, both smart inhaler and smart pin data. Now I would like to pass on to Nikola Torbojevic for inhaler details. Hello, everybody. I'm Nikola. And looking at the smart inhaler in a little more depth, it consists of two major electrical blocks. The first is the main PCB stack, which consists of the NRF5284, the Feather microcontroller board, which essentially acts as the brains of the entire system. A custom PCB that we designed to expand functionality with a real-time clock for time stamping inhaler usage events, a battery management system in the form of a fuel gauge chip, uh, circuitry to drive the indicator LED, as well as miscellaneous connectors to just tie everything together. And then separate from that is also a button board, which serves as the physical mounting point for the two inhaler buttons, as well as the indicator LED. The second major block is the medication nebulizer system itself, which consists of an ultrasonic driver board and accompanying transducer, as well as a pressure sensor. Kind of building off what Paul said, functionally the way the whole thing works is when an IUE instance is registered, the indicator LED illuminates blue and medication is dispensed uh, while the pressure sensor detects that the user is actively inhaling against the device. And it will continue to do so until approximately six seconds worth of medication has been dispensed, um, essentially acting as a metering system for the dose of medication. Now looking at the circuit schematic and PCB for the smart inhaler, starting with the top left, we have our button and LED interface corresponding to the drive circuitry up here as well as this connector down here. We have a five volt boost converter, which is used to power the nebulizer system, as this guy over here. We have our fuel gauge, which is this little chip. Real-time clock with accompanying backup battery, corresponding to these two. And the last but not least, in the bottom right, you see our button board. I would now like to turn it over to Nguyen to discuss the smart pin in a little more detail. Hello, everybody. Uh I'm going to talk about the design of the smart pin. 
So this mapping has five core components. Uh, the first one is microcontroller, uh, which is the same one used in inhaler. Um, it supports Arduino, Bluetooth connections, and um, charging battery via micro, micro USB port. A processor, we use three sensors to collect environmental data, uh, particulate matter sensor, volatile organ organic compound sensor, and temperature humidity sensor. And finally, we have a, a custom PCB which has a battery management system, uh, fan controller, and uh, all connectors on it. For, for the circuit schematic and the uh, PCB for the smart pin, uh, on the left side, start with the microcontroller. It is 90 degree connected to the PCB, so uh, we can save some space for the smart pin. On top of the um, PCB, we have the VOC sensor, the temperature sensor, and the uh, PM sensor at the bottom. But here, uh, for power and battery management, we have the fuel gauge chip, which is right here. And to control the, the fan, we use the internal MOSFET, which is this guy. And finally, we have a, a few connectors for Bluetooth switch, power switch, and the fan. These are uh, for fully integrated smart inhaler and smart pin. Um, and you can see these pictures, they're uh, all electrical components of smart inhaler and smart pin, and they are perfectly fit inside the housing, which is designed by the ME team, and they all work as intended. Uh, next, I uh, look up, we'll talk about the software and the uh, testing result. Thank you, Wen. Uh, my name is Logan Hoskison, and I worked on the software side of this project. So, uh, in our iteration, the microcontrollers were different from the previous team, and the code from the previous team was not compatible with these microcontrollers, so we had to write new firmware to uh, run our devices. So, in addition to the microcontrollers, each device had additional hardware compared to the previous iteration. So, for the inhaler, we had a pressure sensor and a nebulizing transducer. So in the software, we had to read that pressure sensor, and if it was if it showed that a person was using it, then we had to activate activate the transducer to dispense the medication. On the smart pin side, we added an addi additional sensors. So these had to be read in the software and then stored in a file queue, and then if the Bluetooth was connected, we'd send it over to the app. So on uh, some just some lower level software capabilities that we added to these devices. Uh, in case of no BLE connection, we added a file queue for both the bin, pin and inhaler so that when they're not connected, they'll constantly store their data uh, when they're used, and then when they're reconnected, they send it over so we don't have any data loss. Uh, and also, these queues, in case of power loss, their data, they were designed so that their data will be preserved. And then moving on to the Android app, uh, uh, one of the flaws that we noticed with the previous design of the Android app is that when it received an IUE, it would read the pin data and then associate it with an IUE. So if the pin was not connected, there would be no data associated with that IUE. And so you'd be left there with just an I, like an inhaler usage event on your phone without any data associated with it. So what we did in this iteration is we had the pin constantly store its data every five minutes when it's not connected over BLE. Once there's a connection made, it'll send the data and the, the, the phone will retroactively associate that data with the IUEs. So moving on to our final results, uh, the smart inhaler operates well in its enclosure. It uh, dispenses its medication upon a button press uh, and the uh, pressure sensor activation. It stores the timestamps and when connected to BLE, it uploads the timestamps. On the right here, you can see the app. Um, and so here we have a timestamp from the IUEs. And then uh, on the smart pin side, it also operates well in its enclosure. It records all the environmental data and then connects over BLE to the phone app. And here you can see the data associated with the inhaler user design. I will now pass it on to On for the final slides. Thank you, Warren. Hello, everyone. My name is An Tuang. Right now, I'm going to present filter integration and plan and our reflections. For filter integration and plan, minimize small pin size, seeing the size still big. 
to reduce the size of small pin, we can use sensor with our doctor board and bond to save up the space. Implement low power consumption mode to reduce the power amount of power when the battery is low, and implement a replay on small pin if possible. For our reflection, teamwork is the key for the success of process. Having detailed plan for its member and having its other help make the mod process simple and smooth. As for help from the professor or teammate, if you're struggling with specific problem, overall, we went through many challenges during this process, but it was a great learning experience where you can apply all skill and knowledge that you have learned. It's a chance to put your hand on the reporter. And this slide has include all people we want to thank you. Any questions for the double E team? Uh, what, give me a good and a bad about working with the Catholic team. <laughs> That's your question. <laughs> I think the, the bad part is obviously there's different design philosophies, different deliverables throughout the quarter. It makes it difficult to sync up on things. The good part is there's a lot of stuff we don't know, particularly with regards to mechanical design, and they end up being a very valuable resource with regards to that. Two different cultures. Exactly. And uh, you, we had three because we had CE, computer engineering here as well. Uh, I'm involved in the projects, so of course, I think it's great. Putting that aside, that bias aside, I like this project because it really required close communication and coordination between the three cultures. And I think they did it really well. <laughs>